guys welcome to my channel my name is daisy today i'll be sharing with you some creepy leyendas de michoacan mexico by your guys's request of course so grab your snacks put your pjs on grab your cobija and let's get straight into these spooky stories In the heart of Michoacan, where vibrant traditions and rich history thrive, a collection of chilling legends exist. As night falls, these tales are revived. Their stories coming back to life to haunt us. And among these legends is one from Morelia, centered around the Temple of San Francisco, one of the city's oldest religious sites dating back to 1531. The story tells of a young man who had recently become part of the Franciscan community. He was busy with his daily activities, trying to familiarize himself with the convent, and after he finished, he headed to his room to go get some rest. However, as midnight approached, he heard the bells signaling for mass. Now, he found this odd at such an hour, but he prepared himself to attend the service anyway. When he stepped into the temple, he noticed that every seat was taken. So he just sat at the very back where the only available seat was left. But quickly his attention was drawn to something else. The priest, instead of following the usual practice, conducted the mass with his gaze solely fixed on the altar. Well, as the mass came to an end, the young man was struck by a chilling sight. Those around him got up and exited the temple, but they were not walking. Instead, they were floating their way out. But what unsettled him the most is that their face was featureless. And when they stepped into the streets, the Franciscan figures evaporated into thin air. In panic, the young man ran out of the temple, calling out for help. His urgency caught the attention of the head priest and others, and as they gathered, he explained to him what he had witnessed inside the temple. Upon hearing the young man's account, the head priest explained to him, that on nights of a full moon, the souls of the brothers buried in what now is San Francisco Plaza rise from their grave in response to the chimes of the bells to attend midnight mass. So if you find yourself near this plaza on a full moon, you might hear the bells chime or even catch glimpses of the apparitions of the Franciscan brothers. Another eerie legend is found in the city of Zamora. This legend tells of an encounter that a man named Juan had with the ghost of a tragic love story. So the protagonist of this story, Juan, loved playing soccer. It was his passion. So he would often stay out late in the hours of the night playing soccer at a nearby soccer field that was like two miles away from his home. Well, one night as Juan was making his way home after a late night soccer match, it was around 1.30 in the morning and the streets were eerily quiet. As he walked, he passed by a house, a house whispered by the locals to be haunted. Legend has it that within its walls, a young man took his life after taking the life of his unfaithful girlfriend. And it was said that his restless spirit roamed the nights. But Juan was not one to believe in such stories. Although he was skeptical, as soon as he passed by this house, he began to feel an indescribable chill take over his body, but he just brushed it off as a chilly night. However, when he took a glance back at the house, he saw a ghostly figure floating, draped entirely in white, clutching a candle in his right hand. His ghostly sunken face, highlighted with deep shadowed eyes, was staring right at Juan. Upon seeing this apparition, Juan was left 
trembling, temblando del miedo. So he skedaddled his way back home, but keeping this to himself, too scared to speak on it and scared that this figure will come back to haunt him. But after days of constant nightmares, nightmare after nightmare, he was sick of it. He confided in his grandmother about this chilling encounter. She advised him that to shake off those nightmares and to get some peace, he must return to this cursed, haunted house and throw a glass of water at it. So the very next day, Juan, still very much terrified, built the courage to return to this haunted house. When he got there, he threw the glass of water at the front door and miraculously, his nightmares had stopped and he was finally able to sleep peacefully again. So to this day, the legend of the ghost of this cursed home of Samora continues to captivate the city. Some venture to visit this house while others stay far away from it, fearful to encounter this spirit. Now, let's delve into the last story of the Haunted Hospital General del Seguro Social in Morelia. This story actually came to my attention through a blog post I was reading and I knew I had to share it with y'all. So this encounter was submitted by a 67-year-old woman named Elsa who recounted her experience, her chilling experience at this very hospital. So she starts off by saying that many years ago, she found herself facing a health scare, feeling a sharp pain in her chest area that made her think it might be a heart attack. So she quickly called for an ambulance and they transported her to this hospital. Now, when she arrived, the medical staff was limited, overwhelmed by the high number of patients, so they quickly assessed her condition, took her blood pressure, her sugar levels, her symptoms, and seated her in a wheelchair alongside the other patients in the waiting room. So as she was sitting there, she saw many patients waiting on their turn, each with their own injuries, conditions, illnesses, and among these patients, there was a man approximately in his 30s, with a blood-stained bandage tightly wrapped around his right arm. His pale complexion and his distant gaze immediately caught her attention. She proceeded to ask the man what had happened to him. The man in a weak voice replied that he had an accident in his carpentry workshop. He was cutting a board with an electric saw and suddenly, the power went out. Almost immediately, the power came back on and that's when his hand slipped and he cut his arm almost at the elbow level. He managed to stop the bleeding with a tourniquet and called his wife to take him to the hospital. Elsa expressed her sympathy and concern for his situation. She asked him how long he had been waiting for, to which he responded that he didn't know, that he lost track of time. He mentioned that his wife had gone to seek help and hadn't returned yet. Elsa found the situation to be quite strange, but suggested that maybe his wife was preparing things back at home before returning to the hospital that she even suggested to go give her a call or for her to go look for her. But he declined that. He did not want to bother or worry her. So Elsa left it at that as she herself was not feeling well. Instead, she recommended waiting a little longer, assuring him that medical attention would be provided soon as he appeared to be in critical condition. However, he responded that it didn't matter, that he had given up. He expressed to her that he knew he was going to die and only hoped to do so peacefully. Elsa was left speechless and somewhat frightened by his words. She didn't know what to say. His attitude was odd and extremely sad. 
all she could do was try to uplift his spirits, encouraging him to not lose hope, assuring him that he would receive treatment very soon and everything would turn out fine. The man smiled at Elsa with a sense of despair and thanked her for her kindness, that she was the only one that had shown interest in him and that kept him company. They continued talking for a while and he shared some details about his life. He told her that his name was Luis and he worked as a carpenter. He also mentioned that he loved his job and he actually had some upcoming projects in mind. That he was married to Ana and had two young children named Pablo and Sofia expressing that they were his reason of living and that he loved them with all of his heart. Elsa found him to be a good and hardworking man that did not deserve the fate that he was facing. She told him that he had a beautiful family waiting for him to keep fighting for them and for their future, encouraging him not to give up or be defeated by the pain. Luis looked at her with tenderness and told her she was kind and wise. He wished he had met someone like her on the day of his accident, thinking things might have turned out differently. Now, Elsa didn't register what he was saying at the moment, thinking that he was delirious from the blood loss and from the shock. So she just continued to tell him to not think about the past, but to focus on the future, that he still had a lot to live for and to enjoy. But Luis did not believe this. He expressed to her that he felt something bad was happening. He felt this evil dark presence lurking around him and he also said that he was afraid of dying. Elsa told them to not be afraid that God was with him and protecting him. She told them to pray with her and took his hand and together they prayed. As they finished praying, Luis made a request that if she finds his daughter, she should tell her that her doll is in the old toolbox as that's where he had kept it. And at that moment, Elsa felt a chill run through her body. She looked at Luis and saw that his eyes had closed and his face had turned even paler. She spoke to him and shook his hand, but he didn't respond. Elsa became frightened and started to yell out for help. A nurse quickly approached and asked what was wrong. Elsa began to explain that Luis had fainted and needed urgent care. The nurse looked at her with confusion and asked her who was Luis. Elsa pointed to the man next to her, telling the nurse that he was the patient with the almost amputated arm due to an accident he had at his carpentry workshop. The nurse, with a shocked look on her face, reassured Elsa that everything would be fine, that she would go get a doctor and that they would take her to a quieter place. Well, after transferring her, they conducted several tests and a few hours later, they informed her that her condition was not serious, thankfully. They prescribed her medication and advised her to stay under observation for a couple of hours. Meanwhile, Elsa couldn't stop thinking about Luis. Was he fine? Was everything okay? She didn't know anything. Well, after hours of being under observation, her doctor finally came to examine her, asking how Elsa was feeling. Elsa asked the doctor if he knew who he was and if there was any update, but what the doctor told Elsa left her stunned. That that man had died more than 10 years ago in that emergency room, waiting to be treated for his almost amputated arm from that accident that he had in his carpentry shop. Elsa was left speechless because she knew what she experienced. She exchanged words with Luis. She held his hand, shared a prayer. 
She continued to tell Elsa that she was not the only one that had seen Luis, that he was a ghost wandering around the hospital, many people encountering him, talking to him, and treating him like if he was a patient, just waiting to be treated. Elsa was left speechless and knew that she would never forget this day, forget the encounter that she had with Luis. Well, a couple days later, she couldn't shake off what Luis had told her about his daughter, Sofia. So she decided to search for his carpentry shop and she quickly found it just down the street from the hospital. There were a couple of guys working there. So she interrupted and asked for Don Luis's daughter, Sofia, and one of them called out for their mom. The woman stepped out and greeted Elsa. Elsa proceeded to tell her the story of her experience with her father and relayed the message that Luis had given her. Without saying a word, she walked over to a wooden cabinet, pulled out a red, rustic, metallic box. As she opened the box, a small, aging doll was indeed inside. Tears filled the daughter's eyes as she expressed of how thankful she was to Elsa for relaying that message of her father. Now, the ghostly presence of Luis in the emergency room is one of many encounters that are tied to this hospital. However, it was demolished in 2011 due to concerns of its structural stability. Now, it has been transformed into two soccer fields, but the legend still lives on. Many claim that on quiet nights, they observe mysterious movements and ghostly apparitions as if the spirits who have passed away continue to linger unaware they have passed on now before we wrap up this story i want to know if you know of any spooky encounter related to this hospital let me know in the comments down below email me daisyspooks at gmail.com i would love to know we would love to know about these spooky encounters elsa's shared encounter oh my gosh i was crying at i was holding my tears for this one guys i hope i was not the only one but anyways well that was it for today's video i hope you guys enjoyed and also i saw in the comments guerrero and durango guys help me out it was michoacan Durango and Guerrero. So let me know which one you guys want to see next. I will be licking the comments or if you want to see another state next, let me know down below in the comments. It helps me out a lot to see what you guys want to see next. But other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope to see you all in my next one. Bye.